A film is a work of art. It's an expression of an artist, a frank, a candid expression. It can sometimes cause wrath of the public. Is it good to react violently to an art or art doesn't it take care of the public opinions about their expressions? Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Katie and William angered by grotesque invasion of privacy. U.S. missions brace for protests over anti-Islam film. South Africa was clamped down on mining unrest. Pope Benedict arrives in Lebanon. China ships sail in waters near disputed islands. India Coal Court asks government to explain allocations. Another news in detail. Katie and William angered by grotesque invasion of privacy. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are hugely saddened over the grotesque and unjustifiable invasion of privacy by a magazine which published topless photos of Katie and royal spokesman says. French publication Closer printed the pictures of the Duchess taken during the private holiday in France. The royals are now considering legal action over the case. Reporters say that they could not act against the magazine, the photographer, or both. The photos are blurry and taken with a long lens, reporters says. There are four pages of photos of the couple with Katie topless in several. On the magazine's website, it says the pictures are of the couple like you have never seen them before. Gone are the fixed smiles and the demure dresses. On holiday, Katie forgets everything. The Duke and Duchess, who were staying at the French chateau of Queen's nephew, Lord Lindley, have hugely saddened to learn that the French publication and a photographer have invaded their privacy in such a grotesque and totally unjustifiable manner. A spokesman for Clarence House, the Prince of Wales office, said. The incident is reminiscent of the worst excesses of the press and paparazzi during the life of Diana, Princess of Wales, and all the more upsetting to the Duke of Duchess for being so. Their Royal Highness have every expectation of privacy in the remote house. It's unthinkable that anyone should take such photographs, let alone publish them. Officials acting on behalf of the Royal Highnesses are consulting with lawyers to consider what options may be available to Duke and Duchess. The Prime Minister's official spokesman said the view of the Downing Street, that is, they are entitled to their privacy. The royal couple were told about the magazine's plan to publish the photos during breakfast in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, on their tour of the Southeast Asia. It has emerged that the British newspapers were offered photographs last week but turned them down. Reporters say that Lloyd Embley, editor of Mirror and Sunday Mirror, said they were offered a set of pictures of the Duchess in her bikini a week ago. But as with the pictures of Prince Harry, they took the decision not to publish them. U.S. missions braced for protests over anti-Islam film. U.S. missions are on high alert across the Muslim world as anger grows over a film made in the U.S. that mocks Islam. In the Egyptian capital Cairo, police have fired tear gas at about 500 protesters near the U.S. Embassy. More anti-American demonstrations are expected after prayers on Friday. On Tuesday, protesters stormed the U.S. consulate in Benghazi in Libya, killing the ambassador and three others. Since then, unrest has spread across the Middle East and North Africa. 
Protesters in Cairo were pushed back from the U.S. Embassy to Tahir Square, and the reporters in the city say unrest is still simmering. The streets around the embassy have been blocked with barbed wire, concrete, and police vehicles. Islamist groups and others have called for a peaceful million-man march in the city, but a number withdrew those calls on Friday. The Muslim Brotherhood President Mohammed Mursi said it would organize marches and sit-ins in front of the mosque, but none outside the U.S. Embassy in Cairo. After talks with Italian leaders in Rome, Mr. Mursi reiterated his government's determination to protect foreign diplomats on its soil. He also condemned the film as unacceptable. Following violent clashes at the U.S. Embassy in Cairo, earlier this week, U.S. President Barack Obama said he did not currently consider Egypt to be an ally. Mr. Obama has promised to do whatever necessary to protect U.S. citizens abroad and has urged foreign governments to guarantee their security. A bulletin issued by the FBI and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security warned the risk of violence could increase both at home and abroad as the film continues to gain attention. U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon condemned the film and the violence. Nothing justifies such killings and attacks, he said in a statement. The hateful film appears to have been deliberately designed to sow bigotry and bloodshed. South Africa vows clamp down on mining unrest. South Africa's government has announced a raft of measures to clamp down on the continuing unrest in the mining sector. It warned it would crack down very swiftly on anyone involved in, in an illegal gathering of carrying weapons. However, Justice Minister Jeff Radebe said that this did not amount to a state of emergency. The move came as striking workers at the Maricana Platinum Mine rejected a pay offer from the management and some unions threatened a general strike. The mining unrest have been marked by violent clashes including the shooting dead of 34 striking miners by police at Maricana in August. The unrest has since spread to other gold and platinum mines in South Africa, a major exporter of precious minerals. Production has been severely hit with several mines closed. Impossible tasks, the new measures were announced following a meeting of ministers representing the security cluster in President Jacob Zuma's cabinet. Mr. Adabe warned that anyone taking part in illegal protests would be dealt with very swiftly without any further delay. Our government will not tolerate those acts any further, the minister said. Police Minister Nathi Matuatwa stressed that the government had an obligation to ensure that people are safe in South Africa. The strike has been hundreds of protesting workers brandishing sticks and machetes, marched from mine to mine around Maricana and other areas threatening anyone reporting for work. Press reporters in Johannesburg says the government's move could heighten tension in Maricana where miners feel that the authorities have neglected their pleas and turned a blind eye to their living and working conditions. Arresting thousands of armed protesters is near impossible task, our correspondent says, as this could escalate into further violent clashes. Furthermore, charging protesters and processing them throughout the courts could prove to be a logistical nightmare for the authorities, as was the case when 270 minors were charged for murder and subsequently released in recent weeks, she says. Earlier on Friday, the Maricana miners rejected the, a pay offer by the lawn mine management at a rally on a hill near the mine. They said the proposal envisaged a pay rise of just under 1,000 rand a month, far lower than the 12,500 rand, that's around dollars 1,513, were demanding. Miners currently earn between 4,000 to 5,000 rand a month. The other issues of leadership that has been really um, tumbling on and on and we have court case after court case uh, you know decisions made that are really not uh, rational 
in the constitutional sense and so on. I think if anyone were to stand up at this stage to seriously challenge um, and, and to contest for the presidency of the ANC, Jacob Zuma cannot simply take it that he will 